<laughs> hey guys, welcome to my coop. This week, Lula and I want to talk chicken, and trust me, she has a lot to say. Lula is a two-year-old Favacana chicken, and she is totally the boss of this coop and keeps all the other chickens in line. Chicken nuggets around here somewhere, and she's second in command, but mostly she likes to have the other chickens leave for a while. Now, Lula here, she lays green eggs, or eggs with a little green tint. Nugget down here, I don't know if you can see her. Nugget lays eggs with a light blue tint. So behind me, whew, behind me is their coop. And their coop is pretty small for seven chickens, but they pretty much use it to sleep in or lay eggs. Until recently, we left the chickens out during the day to free range or roam around the property foraging or hunting for bugs. Well, some hawks in the area realized they were there and twice tried to get a free dinner. So now we've had to put this little run up for them to keep them safe. Now that the chickens are confined to a smaller space, I need to provide them enrichment. What's enrichment? Hey. I'm glad you asked. Enrichment is how humans encourage animals kept in captivity to use their natural behaviors. So if you have a pet, you probably provide enrichment for your pet by playing fetch with your dog or holding a little toy for your cat, giving your cat catnip, you know, things like that. Well, enrichment is really important for animals for several reasons. One, I really think that if we're going to keep animals in captivity, we should do our best to keep them happy. Two, it keeps our animals moving, and we all know that exercise is really important to live a healthy life. And finally, it keeps their minds healthy. If animals in captivity are bored, then they start st showing destructive behaviors. So with chickens, that could be that they peck at each other or that they pull each other's feathers out and they hurt each other, and we don't want that to happen. Animal enrichment falls into five separate areas. One area is social. So animals have the opportunity to interact with other animals or humans, and also that helps build trust between the humans and the animals. Two is cognitive. So training for tricks or solving puzzles. Like with a dog, it might be hiding treats and letting them find him or treating or training him to learn a new trick. Sensory is another one. So it gives animals the opportunity to use their five senses, whether it is a new scent or something different to look at. Those are things that help with their sensory development. Another one is their habitat. So it's adding things to their habitat to make it more interesting. Food enrichment is providing them different types of foods or different ways to access their food. So with a dog, you might hide it in a Kong to make him work to get it out. With a chicken, we might freeze their berries in a block of water so they have to work to get it out. Um, the food is really important because it makes them work for their food, which kind of simulates the way that they would have to in the wild. Now, I know you were wondering what all of this has to do with the chicken, but stick with me just for another minute. When scientists are creating enrichment opportunities, they go through a process very similar to the engineering and design process. First, they look at the animal's natural behavior or instincts. Second, they set goals for the enrichment. And third, they brainstorm activities. Then they carry on in the process. They design the activity. They test it out. And then they go back and rework it. Now, going back to chickens. Chickens' natural behavior includes foraging for food, which looks like pecking and scratching. They nest, which we've provided a nesting box for their safety and their comfort. They preen, which is where they spread oil on their feathers and make sure that their feathers are all in the same direction. That helps them stay clean. It helps keep bugs off of them and it helps insulate them from rain and cold weather.
The other thing that they do is they dust bathe, which looks a lot like rolling in the dirt. They also perch or roost. So at night, they roost. They get up high. They all huddle together and sleep. Well, in the coop over here, they have a roosting bar. So they come and they all pile in at night. During the day, if they want to take a little nap, then they need to be able to roost. Now, chickens are prey animals. They are real low on the food chain. And that means that they are very susceptible to predators. So the safest place for them to perch is up high. This is where you come in. Because right here, there's nowhere for them to perch. Before, when they were allowed to free range, they would climb up in one of the trees on the property and they would take a little nap. But now they can't do that. Well, we've got this one trying to get up high over here but that's not really a great place to take a nap. So your assignment this week is to send me your very best design for a perch for my chickens. If I like your design, I'll build it for these girls. Here are your constraints. One, I have to be able to purchase the materials at Home Depot. Two, it has to be safe. Somebody wants to say hello. Hold on. This girl right here doesn't have a name. She also doesn't like to be held. So I'm going to put her down. But she's been over here pecking around my feet, fussing at me. All right, where was I? So it has to be safe. Obviously, we don't want to hurt these girls. Um, and then finally, it can be no more than five feet tall, which is about how tall I'm five foot four inches. So these are your project constraints. All right, if you have questions about this project, either leave them in the comments on this video, email me or send me a message on Dojo. When you have your idea, snap a picture of your design along with the materials list and send it to me through email or class Dojo. I can't wait to see what you come up with. <laughs> and neither can they. <laughs>